What's up everybody? I hope you guys are all doing well. I am joining you for a bit of, I guess, a pajama chat tonight. Uh, just kind of winding down, getting ready for work early in the morning tomorrow. And as I was mulling over what I had to do in the morning and minds wander as they do, I started thinking about my place in the microcosm, I guess, of a society that we work in and my place in it. And then kind of that was extrapolated to society as a whole. And it kind of brought me onto this idea that I think is worth talking about, uh, you know, here on YouTube and I think taking home your family and friends and having this conversation. But the conversation is about gender roles or perhaps maybe a more appropriate terminology would be uh, gender stereotypes. Um, now, this isn't going to be like a, an LGBTQ or, uh, you know, rights type of conversation. So if you're kind of looking for that, it's not really what we're going to talk about here. It's more talking about the way that we kind of perceive uh, here, at least in North America and probably I'm assuming in the United States and Canada both, where I'm gonna speak for both because we're kind of very much of a cultural mirror to one another. But at any rate, the way that we perceive our roles in society, be it, you know, a man's role, a woman's role, and how that relates to the things that we choose to do, not just professionally, but you know, even with our discretionary time, so our hobbies and the things that we enjoy doing, and how those things are impacted by uh, this idea of gender stereotypes. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please take a minute to hit that subscribe button if you want to catch uh, more goofy videos from me. It really does help. Uh, any ideas for videos and things you'd love to see, also put those down in the comments below. But let's get right into it. And I think the best way to do so is to, well, I'm gonna have to make this personal to kind of guide you in the direction that I'm trying to explain here. It would make more sense if I did this in, in a more, I guess, personal, personal manner. And from the time that I was very young, I've always had an interest in things that are more, I guess, boy interests or man interests. And that's not a generalization. I had Barbies and Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. All through school, I played sports. I've always liked doing that. Uh, to date, I enjoy technology and uh, photography and things that are just not a 50-50 split of men to women. They are male dominated interests. And it gets me to thinking about, you know, why that is. Now, as I grew up, I grew up in the, you know, 80s and 90s. And that was a time, especially for you young people out there, God, I'm dating myself, but where social media was just, it wasn't prevalent. We were not all connected at the push of send like we are today. Most of what we do and what we emulated came from our traditional types of media, like our TV, our movies, uh, articles, books, things like that. So we would model ourselves after what we thought was the social norms and things, while civil rights was already very well established and women were already well into the workplace and, and getting educated and it was a lot more equal when it came to things of, of more importance, while it wasn't entirely equal, equality was coming when it came to, to really important things like the workplace. Like you were not basically denied a job for being a woman. But in, on the home front, things were still kind of traditional. You know, boys played with Hot Wheels and girls played with Barbies. Now that wasn't a universal rule, but it was just kind of the way that things were. And you can see this played on uh, in some of the dramas and the sitcoms from the 90s as well, where I think some of the more forward thinking and progressive producers would kind of include some of that, uh, include maybe a young girl who played sports and you know tried to kind of commonize that idea. But fast forward, you know, we're talking about 30 years now, we're fast forwarding to 2018, we're almost at 2020. And these traditional stereotypes of interest are still very prevalent. And there really isn't a reason for that anymore. When a lot of people uh, consume their media from things like YouTube, which is kind of like the universal equalizer, right? Because everybody can put their ideas out on YouTube. All you have to do is have a cell phone and, and an internet connection, and you can just put your ideas out there. And it doesn't matter. Like in 2018, it's almost like this is the generation where everybody's equal. It doesn't matter. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be goofy. You may have to be willing to take a little bit of the, the 
backlash from the people who are either jealous or trolls or the traditionalists or what have you. But now more than ever, it should be easy to be accepted. It doesn't matter what the, the traditional stereotypes say, but for some reason, our society still lags behind in that regard. I'll, I'll use kind of an example from my adult life as I'm, I'm very much into cycling. Cycling is a male dominated sport. And if you step up to any serious cycling event, whether it's a, a serious group ride or a competitive event, let's, let's kind of de eliminate charity rides and family events and bike-a-thons and things from this. You are still to this day in 2018 gonna find 10% as a generous uh, number of women uh, in terms of the the whole and it's not that these events aren't provided you know I can speak from my area where you know we don't live in the most temperate climate and we have smaller race sizes and smaller groups and probably elsewhere in the country where cycling can be a lot more prevalent all year round and they do everything that they can to to promote women's cycling they provide uh, equal purses to women which is great but the interest still isn't there now that being said four or five years ago to now we have increased by a factor of 10 whereas four or five years ago i could walk up to a race and i'd be a field of one or two and now you could probably put together a field of 10 maybe 20 if you get some of the surrounding areas to come around but that's to compare to fields of 50 to 75 plus when it comes to the men and you're taking that's 50 to 75 in a particular category now if you don't understand cycling i'm not going to go too much into detail, but there's basically different groups based on skill sets. So there's probably 200 men there. They're just broken up into different, you know, sets of men who are racing against people who are more at their talent level. Whereas the women are all kind of jumbled together and we can barely get 20 together. And and therein lies a problem. And, and this is not, you know, just cycling. This is a lot of things. And I guess it seems to be a lot of things that I find myself interested in. You know, I'm interested in technology and, you know, you know, new ways of, of video and phones and headphones and music and all sorts of things. And it just doesn't seem like something that women are interested in, especially when you kind of look out and things on YouTube. Whenever I go try to find like a, uh, a review or a tutorial or, you know, a quick tip about something, it's 90% of the time is, is published by a man. And it doesn't that's it, fine, it is what it is, content is content. If you're gonna put out good content, I don't give a shit if it's delivered by a, a man, a woman, a nine-year-old. A nine-year-old can put out great content. I don't care. I'm, I'm in the market for information and I will get that from whoever, but it does disappoint me as a woman that my gender is not represented when it comes to things of, you know, popularity we're a lot of the buying power out there and it, and it just blows my mind that women either aren't interested at all um but i don't i don't think that that's the case i, I think that it's just that we don't put themselves out there as interested because i think somewhere there is a cultural roadblock where maybe women don't pursue an interest to begin with because they just don't feel that it's appropriate or ladylike or that if they have that interest, they just don't express it because again, they don't think it's appropriate or maybe ladylike to do so. And it does disappoint me. And I don't know what it is that's going to take it to change because now more than ever, I think it's just easier to express yourself for what it is, regardless of any stereotype. I don't care what it is, if it's, if it's gender, if it's religion, if it's race, if it's you know, bubblegum flavor. Now more than ever, I think we've been able to transcend those things, at least here in, in North America where, you know, I, I am blessed to have the freedom to express myself and to partake in the things that I want to partake in and express the opinions that I want to express. And perhaps I think this day and age, sometimes people take that a little bit too far. You know, people think their opinions are the only opinions that matter and everybody else's opinion is, is worthless and they get rather arrogant about it but to take that a step back into just general interest you know talking about let's let's talk about sports right we talk about uh women getting paid in sports and there's a lot of conversation about women not getting paid the same as men do well, let's talk about cycling you know i'm into cycling why women don't get paid the same as the men and why that's unfair well part of it is based on just plain interest you have people who are just kind of so used to this male dominated environment that it's hard to segue into this this 
idea of, well, I guess there's a market for women. And I know plenty of men who enjoy watching women's racing. There's nothing wrong with that. And perhaps that's a vestige of um, cycling still being more international. Cycling is very an international sport and perhaps some of that is a connection to uh, more traditional values when we talk about certain European countries and, and whatnot. So let's talk about something very American or North American, and that's football. Now, football is a very aggressive uh, contact sport. It doesn't mean that women can't play it, they just don't. They just don't. They don't. There's not enough people who want to. Where you can't put that in contrast to young boys, where I would say conservatively 50% of young boys, either whether it's basketball or uh, football or baseball or any of the mainstay uh, um, <laughs> professional sports league, leagues, they're kind of like born with these these balls and bats and, and whatever in their hands and they're looking up to these people as idols. Like, oh my God, look at all these people, hundreds of thousands of people in the stands, you know, the slow motion video, look at him, look at that catch, he caught that one-handed and he, and he did a somersault and then he ran in the end zone and he's a hero and he lost in the five seconds of the, or one in the last five seconds of the game. And wow, I wish I could do that. And then you get this field of people. You get, you get all these little boys playing little league football and about 1% of those people are gonna go get a, you know, a college scholarship to go on to college. And then like 1% of those people are going to actually be able to go to pro level, uh, you know, football league. But the pool and the interest is there. So these national leagues have like this vast pool of, of talent to choose from. They can be so choosy with who they pick and who they pay and it's just so easy. Go find enough women to make a football league. Please, I defy you to find it. I don't think that the interest is there. Now, football might be a very aggressive end of the spectrum, but even if you dial that back into more, uh, you know, something like a basketball, something a little bit less contact, while it's, it's a higher pool, it's not equal to the men. It's just not. You're not gonna get the same number of women interested in basketball as you get, as you get men. And that draws another distinction where most sports, you will not be able to get men and women to compete with one another. One another. It's, it's just not fair. And as a woman who believes in equality and believes that women can do a lot of the things that men or all the things that men can do, they can do them, but it doesn't mean that they compete with them. A woman and a man competing at football is just dumb. That's just my opinion. Our biology is different. Women are generally smaller than men. The women's muscle mass is usually less than a man. Our body to, to our uh, power to weight ratio for women is less than it is for a man. So in many sports, it is not going to be okay to co-mingle men and women. So you cannot actually allow women to, to compete in these fields and get paid and have the same opportunities as men because you can't safely commingle them, but you don't have the interest to give them the same on the outside. And I'm not defending paying women less for sports in theory, but I understand it. You, you can't just say we're gonna pay people more on principle when it comes to, like, you know, let's talk about football, then the number of people that you have to get past to be a professional football player, it, it in, the amount of work required to get past that larger pool is significantly more than a woman has to overcome. Doesn't mean the woman doesn't, doesn't work very hard or as hard to be a great athlete, but the path to be recognized is much simpler and requires a lot less investment for a woman than a man just because of sheer interest. And this goes beyond sports. You know, I mean, these are just my opinions and I'd love to hear you guys weigh in on those things. But it, it goes to other things. You know, I, I can use photography as an example. If I go to a photography meeting for a, a local club here in my area, maybe there will be another woman, maybe there'll be another couple of women, or maybe there'll be a spouse of somebody who's interested and they've decided to kind of come together and do that. But I'm, I'm surrounded by mostly men. It, it is, is not going to be a given that I'm going to find another woman that I can, you know, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're bonding over this. And we also like to do, you go get our nails done and go over and do that and, and, you know, connect as women do. And I guess you can flip this whole argument on its head. There's, there's things that men don't do. We don't, I don't know why they don't do them other than they just don't think it's socially acceptable for men to do it. Gardening. You know, what, what's wrong with gardening? It's considered, I guess, to be a little too delicate for men. Not to say that no men garden, nothing wrong with it. 
but on the whole, you don't see a lot of men in gardening magazines or lifestyle magazines. You, you start to see it more now as kind of a one-off. You start to see more people kind of venturing in. You see, you see men on makeup commercials now. That could be very controversial for some people who are traditional. I don't really care one way or another. But it's becoming more acceptable for these, these outliers to kind of come forward and be there. But on the whole, we still are driven by these gender roles or these stereotypes that keep the men over here and the women over here and only a little bit of overlap in between. And there's something still in 2018 that keeps us from just kind of embracing what we like to do and just pursuing the things that we want to do with no stigma or no stereotypes attached. But I'd love to hear you guys weigh in in the comments below. Tell me what you think. You know, please be respectful to one another. I don't think everybody's going to agree. I think this could be a very polarizing conversation, but I don't think it needs to be a contentious one. This is one that's probably important to bring home to your family and your friends. You know, uh, parents out there with, especially I, I would say in this particular conversation with young women, um, you know, what, what do you face at home? Do you have, you know, do you have a young girl who wants to go outside and play football and play baseball with the boys in the backyard? Do you feel the need that, oh man, maybe I should kind of draw her back in and, and let her play with some Barbies or, you know, teach her how to cook or do something a little bit more ladylike because I don't want her to, to be judged or vice versa? Do you have somebody who's just locked up in a room playing with their makeup and, and, and the girly stuff and you'd love to just dirty her up and get her outside that she, so she's a little bit more confident in, in 10 years from now that she can get up there with the men and compete in the workforce. Let me know what you guys think down below because I think this is an interesting conversation. It's something that's kind of unspoken um, and, and unwritten, but something that still holds us back as a society. And I'd love to hear everybody's opinion on where you think that comes from and what you think we can do to combat that. So please leave your comments down below. If you like this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button, it makes a difference. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe if you wanna see more videos from my goofy face. And uh, if you have any ideas for anything you love to hear about, any videos you wanna see made in the future, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to embrace and try to include any of those ideas in a repertoire of uh, videos that I'd love to make. I'd like to make more of them this year as my schedule has become a lot more normalized uh, in the last couple of weeks and I think I can do this a little bit more, um, you know, on a routine basis. So thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.